Hello, hello everybody. My name is Britt Linney. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be trying the webcam that comes with the computer I'm using. So hopefully everything's alright. Now, some people, whoever watches this video might be wondering why is she moving back and forth the way she is? I can answer that. I have... Gosh, I'm not entirely sure what it's called, because there could be different reasons behind it, but I rock compulsively. I, I move compulsively. When I'm sitting, it's usually back and forth. When I'm standing, it's side to side. I'm always moving something, and usually it's my rocking. So, I mean, hopefully that doesn't bother anybody. I can't exactly help it. Um, it's been an issue my entire life. Because a lot of people don't like rocking for some reason. It's comforting, to be honest. I actually enjoy rocking. But, um, yeah, that, that's why I'm doing this back and forth motion, hopefully. It doesn't bother anybody. I'm trying to stay still. But if you catch me rocking, I'm sorry. Um, so today I'll be playing Corpse Factory. It's a demo um, available on Itch.io. Um, created by River Crow Studio. So, it's a horror game. It's got some themes behind it. So, if you're sensitive to anything that's abusive or anything like that, then just be prepared if you want to watch the video. So, um, yeah, we're going to be playing Corpse Factory. It's the demo version. I'm kind of excited. I wonder if it's kind of like Corpse Party. I love Corpse Party. I just really like horror games. It takes a lot for something horror-based to uh, catch me off guard. Um, my first horror movie I watched was um, Freddy Krueger. One second. I gotta... Shifted it. My bad. Okay. So... Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let's get back to it. Alrighty. Sorry about that, guys. I'm still getting used to everything. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna play Corpse Factory. Hope it's... What was I saying? Oh! Um, the first horror movie I ever watched was Freddy Krueger. All-time favorite. When I was... Eight years old? I've watched a lot of horror movies. Nothing really phases me anymore. Um, so let's, let's do a new game. Let's get into this. I'm done talking y'all's ear off. Let's, let's get into this. Dun, dun, dun. Alright. <clears throat> oh, that's cute. Okay, off to a good, good start. I know those bitches. I like it when horror games cuss, I'm sorry. <laughs> mm. I know those bitches have been talking about me behind my back. They flash those fake smiles when I walk past. They wave half-heartedly and say things like, Oh, hi, Emmy! Or, you're the only one brave enough to pull off that look. Rude. They're all two-faced, lying assholes. I hate each and every one of them. I would too. I would too. Amano, Sachiko, Kurosawa, just look at them. Everything about them is fake. Fake lips, fake nails, fake smiles, fake personalities. Look, I'll be the first to admit that I'm a fake bitch too, but even I know I'm not as bad as them. I'm not horrible to every person I meet, just the ones I don't like. Aren't we all? Though, I mean, has anyone ever like, oh, it's you, 
Hi, it's so good to see you. When you know deep down inside you wish they weren't there that day. We all go through that, it's fine. <clears throat> Ugh, it's not fair that I have to work with them. I just wanted a part-time job, something breezy and casual. How was I supposed to know these delinquents would, be would obsess over tormenting me? Aw, I wonder who's who. I wonder if she's the one talking. Her. I realize now pointing doesn't do anything. Her. Or maybe not. That's a mono. A mono is unbearable, but probably the least terrible of the three. She's a year younger than me and acts like she's some famous pop idol. But she's a dropout, just like me, working in this dead-end, part-time job just so her parents don't kick her out of their house. She spends her evenings singing at underground bars and hanging out with shady talent agencies who swear they can promote her and make her the next big pop star. She gets taken advantage of time and time again, but never seems to learn her lesson. I don't know if she's just stupid or if she really thinks she's on the right track to becoming famous. Sachiko is the kind of straight-laced girl you see at every school. This is Sach Sachiko. Sachiko? <clears throat> Studying her ass off to earn her parents' approval. The type of girl that always has the best grades, but never really has any friends. Sorry, I'm using a laptop. I'll eventually save up enough money to get an actual desktop computer with monitors and a mounted webcam and a microphone because I really enjoy doing this. I just, I like playing games, but I don't really have anyone to really play them with. Like I have a ton of board games. I have Clue, I have Jumanji, Monopoly, Checkers, Chess, um, Battleship, I've got so many, and I got no one to play with, and it's just, <sighs> my fiance doesn't like board games, he finds them boring, hence, you know, board games, haha, <laughs> so I just kind of collect them in the hopes that someday I'll be able to find someone to play with, um, so I thought, you know, if I can't play with somebody, then I'll just record myself playing and hope other people enjoy it as much as I do. <sighs> Anyways, let's get into it again. Sorry about that. The type of girl that always has the best grades, but never really has any friends. She's the kind of girl that graduates, then the reality of the real world knocks her on her ass, and she realizes she actually has no clue what she's doing, just like the rest of us. Excuse me. It's hitting the feels, man. So she settles for the first crappy job she can find, and then suddenly it's three years later and she's still mopping up vomit just to make ends meet. Instead of being humbled by her situation in life, Sachiko decides to take her anger out on everyone around her. I've seen her slap customers out of frustration. Well, girl, and you're not fired yet? Rumor has it that she strangled the manager on one occasion. Apparently he's too afraid to fire her now. I don't blame him. I'm afraid of her too. Call the police. Call the police. That is assault, dear manager, dude. She even looks bitchy. Like, look at that face. She's judging everything they're doing. Just all like, you're carrying that box wrong. You're grabbing that titty wrong. Like, come on now. Relax. And then there's Kurosawa, this stuck up looking, mm -hmm. and then there's Kurosawa. I could write an entire blog on all the things I hate about her. She's pretty, but she's very aware of it. She seems to have a new sugar daddy <laughs> every few weeks, some poor old fool that she strings along and milks dry. She must be nearing 30, but all her friends are still in senior high school. It's more than a little weird. She's just holding on to her, you know, early glory days. I mean, sugar daddies, friends that are way younger than she is, like twice her junior. She's just trying to grasp a hold of that life that she so desperately wanted. But now she's stuck working a part-time, dead-end job. 
I'm, I'm kidding. They hang out around the train station, bullying homeless people and shoplifting from the convenience store. Sorry, the whole bullying homeless people kind of stumbled me a little bit. That's just so rude. I'm pretty certain that she's done time once or twice. I wouldn't be surprised. Kurosawa is just an all-around terrible person. She makes Amano and Sachiko look like saints in comparison. Honestly, I couldn't ask for a worse group of co-workers. Finally, there's me. What do I look like? I'm sorry, what does she look like? Emi, Emi Katsuno, university dropout, part-time cashier, and up to my ears in debt. I live in a crappy apartment in a bad neighborhood just to keep my head above water. My apartment building is filled with deadbeats. Lone sharks, junkies, perverts, you name it. As if that wasn't bad enough, I have to work four days a week with the three worst girls I've ever met in my life. Today is no different from any other day. Amano greets me at the door, her disgustingly puffy and pouty lips, pulled back in a half snarl, half smile. I can smell the sickly sweet scent of too much lip gloss from ten feet away. Oh, hi, Emmy. You're late again, you know. Bitch. Yeah, sorry. Just let me pass. I'll go clock in. Oh, Emmy's pretty. Oh, my nose itches. Allergies, man. We had like a big thunderstorm. We were in a tornado watch last night. And it just shook the cedar trees clear of its pollen. And oh my god, it's attacking my nose. Ugh, you're going to be seeing a lot of nose scratching. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Whatever. Kurosawa, Kur Kurosawa wants to see you. Can you, like, just go see her? Fine. Amano walks off. I look around for Kurosawa. The stale stench of cigarette smoke eventually overwhelms the lingering scent of lip gloss in the air and leads me to her location. Oh, wow. You wanted me? Katsuno. I need you to process a big refund. Don't mess it up, okay? It's for a regular customer. Okay, I can do that. What am I refunding? There's a bunch of shirts on the counter. Just bring them up and refund them for cash. You can leave the money in the envelope under the register. Fine, I'll take care of it. Thanks, I'm going for a smoke break. I'm giving her a deeper voice, if you can even tell. Because she's older. So her voice is a lot more refined. I'm bullshitting, I'm sorry. I'm just, I, I... I'm just gonna try my best. I decide to clock in before processing the refund. I won't be paid for this shift if the company doesn't know I came into work. I go behind the counter and retrieve the sign-in booklet. I flip, today, I flip to today's date and fill in my details. Done and done. The shirts that Kurosawa mentioned are lying haphazardly over the counter. I pick them up and scan each one. They're not cheap. The first rings up at 11,000 yen, and the next is 13,000. There are six shirts all up. There are six shirts all up, each one a little more expensive than the last. They don't look worn, and the tags are intact. I'm supposed to ask for a receipt or proof of purchase before making a refund, but the customer is obviously not here. Besides, the request came directly from Kurosawa, my superior, so I can't exactly refuse her. Refuse. The refund goes through the system successfully, and the cash drawer opens up. I count out the correct amount of money in 10,000 yen bills, then pop an elastic band around the cash and put it in an envelope. I also print a copy of the refund receipt and slip it in with the, with the cash. Job done. I slide the envelope back under the register and lean against the counter. Surveying the store, I can store, I can see that there aren't any customers around. It's still early in the morning after all. We don't usually get much business until around lunchtime. I hover around the register for a while, biting my nails and staring at the clock to pass time. Kurosawa eventually returns from her smoke break. Half an hour must have passed by now. Who does she think she is? You finished that refund? Yeah, I did it, just like you said. Okay. She rummages around underneath the cash register and pulls out the envelope stuffed with cash. Her fingers flick through it quickly, counting each note, and she nods as though satisfied. Good work, Katsuno. I'll pass this on to the customer next time they come in. No problem. Anyway, I'll take over the cash register for a while. Do you want to go tidy up stock? Yeah, okay. 
I'm not too bothered if Kurosara wants to take over my register duties. It's boring standing around. I'd much rather be doing something than nothing. As I head toward a rack of untidy jackets, Sachiko bumps into me. Sorry, didn't see you there. Sorry, did she actually just apologize to someone? Sachiko, the customer abuser? Er, that's fine. You okay? I haven't been sleeping real well. I'm just tired, that's all. Well, um, get some rest, I guess. Thanks. She looks tired. Look, while I've got you here, I know I haven't really been easy to go along with lately. I've got my own personal issues, but that's no reason to take it out on you and the other girls. I can't believe what I'm hearing here. Sachiko so has had a change of heart? So, I'm resigning as of today. I don't deserve this job. I wanted to apologize and make sure there's no bad blood between us. Sachiko, so I, I don't know what to say. I never expected this from you. Yeah. If you're resigning, do you have another job lined up? No, not yet. But I need to work on myself first. I have a lot to think about. Girl, those bags under your eyes, man. You must not have had sleep for a few nights, just not last night. Not just last night. Words. Well, I mean, as long as you're sure about this. I am. In that case, then thank you for apologizing. I forgive you. Thank you, Emmy. Well, until next time, then. Yeah, until next time. Sachiko so takes her leave. I'm still a bit taken aback by her sudden personality change. Did I misjudge did I misjudge her from the start? No, that can't be it. She has a history of abusing customers and coworkers. No way I imagined all that. Regardless, I'm actually kinda glad she's trying to get a grip on her life. I hope everything works out for her. If she's resigning today, then I suppose then I suppose the only two terrible coworkers left are Mano and Kurosawa. I glance at Amano, who is standing by the door waiting to greet customers. She has a vacant expression on her face, like always. I then look toward the register where Kurosawa should have been standing. But she's not there. Didn't she offer to take over register duties from me? Where the hell did she disappear to? I wander behind the counter. The register doesn't look like it has been touched. Out of curiosity, I slide my hand around, I slide my hand around under the register. And the cash stuffed envelope is gone. No sign of it. The receipt from the refund is lying on the floor. I bend down and pick it up. It's a standard refund receipt stating the value of the transaction. My name is signed at the bottom since I was the one who processed it. Ooh. She stole it. I'm telling you, she stole it and she's going to plim it on, pin it on you, girl. And the refunded money is gone. And so is Kurosawa. Did she... No, she couldn't have. Surely she wouldn't have run off with the money. No one would be stupid enough to risk their job over that, would they? Ah, there's Katsuno. <clears throat> ah, there's Katsuno. You should go ask her about it. Huh? Kurosawa is still here? She seemed to pop up from nowhere. Hats Katsuno, a word if you please. Ah, Hirosha. Hirosha? Hiroda? The manager of the store. He normally spends his time in the office out back, so it's kind of unusual to see him here. What could he want with me? Kurosawa was tending to the register when she noticed the system flagged a large refund as suspicious. Do you know anything about it? Well, yeah, I processed a big refund this morning. Is that so? Do you have the receipt? Here. I hand him the transaction receipt that is still between my fingers. He looks it over once and twice, his eyebrows furrowing. This is quite a large refund. No wonder the system flagged it. Did you get approval from Kurosawa before processing this? Kurosawa was the one who asked me to process it, sir. I never even spoke to the customer that it was intended for. That's not true, Hirota. I don't know anything about this refund. Bitch! Wait, what? Where is the refunded money now? Well, I put it in an envelope underneath the register, but... There's no money here, sir. She's lying to you. Interesting. No money to be found. And Katsuno, you're the one who signed off on the refund. That makes you responsible. Yeah, I did sign it, but... You're going to have to tell the truth, Katsuno. Did you take the money? Don't make me get the police involved. 
Wait, hang on. Do you think I stole it? Kurosawa asked me to process the refund and leave the cash in an envelope. Nonsense. That's simply irresponsible. It's not safe to leave cash out of the register. But... I feel my stomach beginning to sink. What exactly is happening here? Confess at once, Katsuno. I didn't steal the damn money. If anyone stole it, it was that bitch Kurosawa. Uh-huh. You want to go? It's not real. It's not real. Enough. We're not going to stand here and argue about this like bickering school children. Sachiko. Like a serpent slinking out of the shadow, Sachiko slides beside Hirota. Yes, Hirota? Did you witness Katsuno take an envelope of cash from the register? Oh, yes, sir. Just this morning. She acted like she was processing a refund, then pocketed the cash. I meant to bring it to your attention sooner, but... Uh, bitches. Sachiko, that bitch, she hasn't changed at all. She just sold me out. I managed to catch a glimpse of Kurosawa smirking at Sachiko. They nod in unison and giggle. Are they in this together? Are they throwing me under the bus just so they can steal some cash? I can't believe it. I'm so freaking angry. There you have it. A witness to your crime. Kurosawa, if you would kindly call the police. Yes, sir. Wait just a minute. I scream louder than intended, but my blood is boiling and I can barely control myself. I didn't steal any money. Why don't you check the security cameras? You'll see that I'm innocent. Oh, you know those cameras haven't worked in, the, in months, right? I suppose nowadays they're mostly just for show. Of course, if Hirota really wants me to, I could go double check just to be sure, though I think that would just be a waste of time. Thank you, but that won't be necessary, Kurosawa. Kurosawa's eyes narrow as she gazes at me wickedly. Amano, please show everybody what you found. You got it, boss. I didn't even realize Amano was part of this discussion. She's leering at me disgustingly, slapping an envelope against her open palm. Found this wad of cash in Katsuna's locker out back. I can feel the blood drain from my face. I haven't even been out the back today. Are they all in this against me? Did they plant evidence to get me in trouble? Oh man, this is making this is making me angry. I would be so pissed. I'd be going to jail for a whole nother reason. Like assault like uh-uh don't pin this on me i'll give you something to pin on me mm -mm. you're lying i haven't even had time to go out back today i mean what you want me to say you think the cash just appeared out of nowhere it would seem all the evidence is against you katsuno since we located the money i won't have you arrested but you will not step foot in this store ever again do i make myself clear you're fired, and I will make sure you never work in any of our stores again. I'm speechless. I can't even process my thoughts. The quiet giggling and snickering of Kurosawa, Sachiko, and Amano buzzes in my ears as, until my skull feels like it's going to burst. Haruto grabs my shoulder and tries to lead me outside, but I jerk away and stumble backward. My back slams into the glass window at the front of the store. Thankfully, the glass doesn't shatter, but I can immediately feel a bruise forming. I push myself forward, regaining my balance, and duck toward the sliding door. See you around, Emmy. Oh well, I guess not, hey. Ha ha. I blink tears out of my eyes as I dash through the store's front door. Oh, Emmy. My anger and fear and anxiety get the better of me, and it's a good five or ten minutes before I realize that I've been running aimlessly through the shopping mall. I reach a hand to my eyes to wipe away the moisture and take a deep breath. I look around, trying to get my bearings. The escalators, at least I know where I am. I need to sit down and compose myself. If I don't calm down, I might be tempted to return to the store and start punching those three absolute assholes. Same. Same. With my head down, I blindly charge towards a small seating area. Ah, watch out! I collide headfirst with somebody in front of me. Without thinking, I scream out in anger. Watch where you're going! Ah, sorry. Wait, this girl, I know her from somewhere. Katsuno, is that you? Huh? I know you. Have we met? Yes, of course. We graduated from senior high school together, remember? Did we? Senior high school was more than a year ago. Feels like a different lifetime. How does she expect me to remember that? 
Hmm, maybe, yeah. You're a Satao, right? Aoi Satao? I don't think I'm saying it right. Someone correct me. That's me, you do remember. Well, kinda. Sorry, I've had a crappy day. I just got fired, so I'm not thinking straight. You got fired? I'm really sorry. Um, you bumped into me pretty hard. Are you hurt? I'm fine. Ayoi is rubbing her arm tenderly. I figure I must have injured her, but I'm not really in the mood to stand here and apologize to some old acquaintance. I have to go. Excuse me. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I push past o Ayoi. Unexpectedly, the shy and spineless girl grabs my arm and stops me from leaving. Her grip is surprisingly strong. Katsuno, you said that you just got fired, is that true? What? Yeah, I'm pissed off about it. Tell me what happened. Why are you so interested? I, I just thought maybe I can help, is all. Whatever, you can't help. Some bitch set me up, she stole a bunch of money and made me take the fall. Ah, I see. Are we done here? Can I leave now? Sorry for keeping you. Yeah, okay. Once again, I turn to leave, but I always next words manage to catch my interest. You know, if someone got you fired, there is a way you could get revenge. Revenge? What is this girl on about? Does she have some way for me to get back at Kurosawa? What am I thinking? I can't even step foot back in the store. My chance to get any kind of justice just doesn't exist. Revenge? What the hell are you talking about? Never mind. I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, hell no. You're not going cold on me now. Tell me what you meant. You can't tempt us. Okay? We have revenge in our heart. We're gonna get revenge. One way or the other. And you know what? I have a feeling that the revenge is gonna cause them to die. And I'm okay with that. I am. Like, I'm I'm on a whole nother level. I can't believe I'm getting this mad from a game. <laughs> mm. uh, okay, but let's talk quietly. There may be a way for you to get back at whoever got you fired. Have you heard the rumors of Corpse Girl's website? Corpse Girl? Who is that? Sounds like some death metal band. I... <clears throat> Aoi? Gosh. I'm just gonna call her A because I feel like I'm bitching, bitching, butchering her name. A ignores my comment and continues on with her speech. They say that if you visit Corpse Girl's website, you can request a death. Request a death? What is this girl ranting about? Hang on, start over. I'm completely lost. A frowns, a look of annoyance on her face. Say somebody wrongs you and you want to get revenge on them. Go on. Rumors state that you can visit Corpse Girl's website and fill out a form in order to request a specific person's death. This Corpse Girl, is she like a hitman or something? No one knows the truth. No one knows the truth. All I know is that her victims always receive a photo of their own corpse before they die. How is that possible? I don't know. Go for it, lady. I, I've been wanting to use the website for some time. There's somebody, somebody that I'd be happier without, but I'm not brave enough to go through with it. Still, I want to know if the rumors are true. If you use the website, you could tell me if it works or not. This whole thing sounds sketchy, risky. Are the police going to come get me if I go on this website? I, I've got no idea. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> well, thanks any, thanks I guess. A doesn't make a further attempt to stop me when I turn on my heel and walk away. I don't know what to make of her suggestion. Can such a website even exist? The ability to, re the ability to request a death just sounds so unbelievable. And yet... Are we going on the website? I find myself unable to get the possibilities out of my mind as I make my way toward the train station. Corpse Girl. A website tailored for revenge. I could daub... In Kurosawa, Sachiko Amano, 
If I could remain anonymous, then no matter what happens, whatever fate befalls those girls, it couldn't be traced back to me. I start to wonder if ordering the deaths of a few girls simply because they got me fired is a little extreme. Although, they're not exactly saints, they're closer to human garbage more than anything else. They've always been hostile towards me. I'd probably be doing the world a favor if I had them all killed. If they screwed me over without a second thought, who knows what they might do to their next unsuspecting victim. Yeah, killing all three of them is the right thing to do. Removing them from the planet will, pre will prevent them from hurting anyone else. My heart begins to race. Do it. Do it. Do it. The trip back to my apartment is boring. The train carriage is nearly empty, save for a few junior high school boys and a couple of women in business attire. I have a few seats all to myself, so I sprawl out and check my phone for messages. When I feel confident that no one in the carriage is watching me, I decide to search for Corpse Girl's website on my phone. I don't exactly know how easy it will be to find. Maybe I should have asked A for the address. Well, a quick search shouldn't be too hard. I begin to type. Corpse Girls website. A few results pop up on my screen, but none seem relevant. There are links to funeral services and anime fan sites, but nothing really matches what I'm looking for. Maybe this was a bad idea. I should probably delete my search history. Hmm, maybe just one more search. Corpse girl. Request, a uh, death. My phone seems to lag for a few seconds as the search is submitted. Then, a fresh list of links appears. The top result catches my eye immediately. Corpse girl, revenge at your fingertips. This must be it. I click the link and the website loads immediately. Oh, she's so cute. The website is simple. There's a freaky little dancing girl at the top of the screen who looks too happy to belong on such a site. The whole site is really basic. A small blurb of text offers instructions. Request a death. Fill out your victim's information and upload a photo of them. Your victim will receive a photo of their own corpse shortly before they die. Watch out! Don't be an idiot and enter your own information or you will be cursed. What the hell? Is this site actually for real? I start to wonder if I should go through with this. There's very little useful information on the site. I mean, it does say requested death, but come on. Is someone actually going to go out and kill the person I choose? And how on earth can someone receive a photo of their own corpse before they're actually dead? That just doesn't make any sense. My heart suddenly skips a beat and I nearly drop my phone when it buzzes at me. Thank God, it's just a text message. An unknown number, that's never a good thing. Wait a minute, there's a photo attachment. Who would be sending me a photo from an unknown number? My curiosity gets the better of me and I open the message. Well, now you got a photo of her. Kurosawa, you freaking bitch. I knew it. I knew she set me up, and Amano and Sachiko were in on it too. They made me process a fake refund to get cash out of the register so that my name would be on the transaction. And all for what? A bit of cash that'd have to split three ways? Erg! Kurosawa, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. A few of the junior high school boys nearby look at me with worried expressions, but I don't give a damn. I'm angry. I'm furious. Kurosawa is going to pay. I close Kurosawa's message and return to Corpse Girl's website. It's clear what has to be done. I'm going to request Kurosawa's death. I read, the, I read the website's instructions one more time to make sure I haven't missed anything important. Enter the victim's phone number and upload a photo of the victim. Aha! Ahahaha! I can't believe it! Kurosawa just signed her own death sentence. She sent me a photo of herself and her phone number was included with the message. I fill in the phone number and upload the photo, my hands trembling the whole time. My thumb hovers over the submit button. I feel a chill down my spine, my face turns pale and I immediately feel cold and clammy. It's because of the fear of what you're about to do. You're taking a life. But you know what? She deserves it. Is Kurosawa really going to die if I use this website? Or is this all a sick hoax? Sick hoax. 
I run through the possible outcomes in my head. First possibility, nothing happens, and Kurosawa is none the wiser. Second possibility, Kurosawa gets pranked by whoever is running this website. Maybe the administrator gets a kick from tormenting people. Kurosawa might just receive some spam text or something like that. Third possibility, Kurosawa dies. She gets murdered or some elaborate scheme is concocted to make her die accidentally. My lips curl into a frenzied smile. I like the third possibility the most. Ah ha 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 I slam my thumb down and smash the submit button. Just like I hope y'all smash that subscribe button. It would be very helpful. That was too perfect. I had an opportunity and I took it. I pat myself on the back. <laughs> <clears throat> Prepare for the end, Kurosawa. When I get home, I can barely contain my nervousness. I'm, sh I'm shaking as I open the door to my tiny apartment. How will I know when or if Kurosawa is dead? Will Corpse Girl's website notify me? No, of course not. I didn't give any of my personal information to the site. The entire thing was anonymous. And it's not like I can visit the store tomorrow and see if she comes into work. I'll be kicked out as soon as I show my face. So what do I do? Ah, uh, that's it. I whip my phone out of my purse and open Noise, a social, a social network app that all my coworkers are connected to. Kurosawa, Sachiko, Amano, and I are all in this group chat labeled Work Life. We use the chat to swap shifts with each other and complain about the boss. Just as I was hoping, I haven't been kicked out from the group yet. I swipe through the list of chat members and tap on Kurosawa's profile. Last online one hour ago. Perfect. If I use this app, I can keep an eye on when Kurosawa is active. She only has to be using her phone for noise to detect that she's online. She doesn't necessarily have to be using noise itself. It's the best way I can think of to monitor if she's still alive or not. It will do for now, at least. I wonder why Kurosawa sent me that photo of herself via a regular text message instead of through noise. Maybe she thought she could be busted for it if someone got into her noise profile. Who knows what that girl was thinking. Regardless, I'm thankful she made such a stupid mistake. I wouldn't have obtained her phone, her phone number if she had decided to message me through noise instead. After all, noise is strictly an online service. No need for phone numbers. Come to think of it, where did she get my phone number from? Well, no matter, it worked out in the end. I slump down on the couch in front of the TV and keep my phone firmly gripped in one hand, my knuckles whitening. I start to bite the fingernails on my other hand out of anxiety. In an attempt to distract myself, I switch the TV on and stream some stupid reality shows. The distraction hardly works and I find myself instinctively glancing at my phone every couple of minutes, waiting for any kind of update on Kurosawa's online status. The evening passes slowly. Mm. Is she gonna die? Hopefully she dies before the demo ends. Sunlight streams through the open curtains and I startle. Did I fall asleep on the couch? I wet my mouth with my sleeve, cleaning off a trickle of drool from my chin. My phone is still in one hand and I quickly check it. I tap the fingerprint smeared screen, but it's not responding. The battery died. I must have fallen asleep and left the screen on all night. I race toward my charger and plug it in, anxiously waiting for just enough energy to turn the phone screen back on. After what seems like an eternity, the phone comes to life. I catch a glimpse of the clock as I swipe the lock screen away excuse me mm. heartburn as the reflex acting up on me today Ooh. um hold on I'll be right back give me just a second um I have returned. <laughs> kitty, kitty, kitty. I have to show you all my cats another time. I got five of them.
Did the music already end before I leave? Before I left? Oh well. After what seems like an eternity, the phone comes to life. I catch a glimpse of the clock as I swipe the lock screen away. 6.34 a.m. I open up noise as quickly as I can and flick through the to Kurosawa's profile. Huh? This profile is private and you are not connected to this person. Damn it, and she blocked me! I frantically navigate to the group chat only to find that I've been kicked out. Damn it, damn it! What can I do now? I've got no way of knowing whether Kurosawa is still alive. I slam my phone down in frustration and it vibrates in retaliation. Huh? Another text message? I blink a couple of times. Who would be texting me at this hour? It might be Kurosawa again, trying to rub my face in her victory. Well, if that's the case, at least I would know that she's still alive. I hesitantly pick up, pick my phone up again and open the message. There's no text, just a photo attachment. Oh no. It's your body. She did it to you. Kya, what the hell is this? I nearly dropped my phone in terror. A photo of a dead body twisted, crumbled like it has fallen from a great height. A spatter of blood is flecked across the grass. It's hard to make out the details of the person. Dirty blonde hair, familiar clothes, smudged makeup. This, this dead body, is it supposed to be me? There can be no mistake in it, without a doubt, this is a picture of my own corpse. I shriek again, unable to process what I'm seeing. I'm so entranced by the battered corpse that it takes me a minute to notice a timestamp in the corner of the photo. It's today's date, but something is off. The time says 2.28 a.m. 7.28 a.m. That's about an hour from now. I shiver involuntarily and feel the sickening sensation of bile rising in my throat. This photo... Is this a prediction of my death? Am I going to die within the hour? And then the truth hits me harder than my face hit the ground in this grisly photo. When you request a death on Corpse Girl's website, your victim receives a photo of their own corpse before they die. Before they die. I can't look at it anymore. I throw my phone to the side and curl up on the floor. Did Corpse Girl send this to me? And how, how did somebody get a photo of my corpse? A photo that is seemingly from the future. It's impossible. It has to be a hoax. Some trick. Some psycho tormenting me. Yeah, that's all it is. Someone is messing with me. Probably Kurosawa. I get up off the floor and stumble around. I'm kind of lightheaded and unbalanced, and my stomach feels queasy, ready to launch its contents through my throat at any second. I blindly reach around for my phone and finally grasp it with near-frozen fingers. The phone number that sent the photo is an unknown number, but the digits don't match the number that Kurosawa texted me from yesterday, so it's unlikely this came from her. Bizarrely, the, photo, the phone number is kind of weird. There are more digits than should be possible. I try to count them, but stumble a few times in confusion. I eventually conclude the number has 18 digits, way too many. In addition to the phone num in addition the phone number seems to repeat digits a lot. 6663666226664466. It seems too strange to be real. Is it possible to fake a phone number? Something interesting catches my attention, even though the caller ID doesn't recognize the number and has data on the origin of the number. <laughs> Tokyo, Japan, my very own city. Perhaps the sender of the photo can mask their number but can't hide their location. This gives me an idea and I decide to get to the bottom of the situation despite my head throbbing and my stomach pleading to be emptied. I punch the phone number into a search engine along with the word Tokyo. One result. 
The link points to a popular discussion board, Noise Channel. It's an anonymous board where users can talk about almost anything. And, no big surprise, it's owned and operated by the very same company behind the Noise app I use on my phone. I tap the link and get taken to a discussion topic from less than a week ago. I quickly read through it. Topic. Strange photo from unknown number. Hey, so today I got a strange gore photo from a number I don't have in my contacts. Not sure what the deal is, it was gross though. Wondering if any hackers can trace the number or something. It's 666-336-6622-6666-44666. Seems like Tokyo area. I'm in Osaka. Okay, thanks in advance. The topic has only one reply. One reply. You got this too? Was the gore photo a picture of yourself? I am worried. Received a similar pic from the same number. Thinking about contacting the police. Not sure if I'm overreacting. And that's it. The end of the discussion. Neither poster followed up on the conversation. Damn it. That's all? That didn't give me anything to go on, except now I know that at least two other people have received bloody photos of themselves. I wonder if those photos were as extreme as the one I received. What happened to these two posters? Why didn't they continue the discussion? Um, they died? I feel myself beginning to sweat. My body is going from cold to hot and back again several times a minute. It feels like I have a fever, but I know it's just stress tearing me up. I check the time. 6.59 a.m. About half an hour until the time printed on the photo. I take a deep breath and the doorbell buzzes. I freeze in place, unsure whether I should answer the door. In this sketchy apartment building, it's a risk to answer the door on any given day before even taking into consideration that some psycho just texted me a photo of my own corpse. Sorry. I almost choked on my spit. I tiptoed toward the door on stiff legs and gazed through the peephole. There's no one there. Phew. I breathe a sigh of relief. Maybe I'm just on edge and the doorbell echoed from someone else's apartment. Besides, I don't know of anyone who would visit me unannounced, especially this early in the morning. I slump to the floor, my back sliding down the door as I come to rest on the carpet, my legs splayed out haphazardly in front of me. I've had enough beer for one day. I have to just believe this whole thing is a hoax. It's probably karma for trying to get revenge on Kurosawa. Yeah, that's it. Karma. The doorbell rings again and I scream in shock, my head slamming back against the door I was resting against. I jump to my feet and ignore the pupil this time. This time simply swinging the door wide open. <clears throat> A gust of chilly morning air sweeps into my apartment and I shut my eyes tightly against the sudden cold. My messy hair tangles in the wind and obscures my vision when I open my eyes. Quickly, I sweep the hair out of my face and look around. There's no one here, except... A metal trolley is blocking the walkway in front of my door. A stark white bag about the size of a human body rests atop the trolley. My heart begins to race as I immediately recognize what this is. On TV, they always show these trolleys used in morgues to cart dead bodies around. It's a body bag. Duh. Dead bodies. The vomit that has been trying to escape my body all morning finally finds its way out of my mouth. I retch and heave in the doorway until nothing is left inside my belly except the stinging stomach acid that threatens to burn through its fleshy container. I feel that, girl. I feel that every damn day. I love spicy foods. I can't eat spicy foods. It makes me so sad. The stench wafting from the trolley is overwhelming. Pinching my nostrils closed does little more than trap the horrific odor inside my own skull, and I gag and splutter involuntarily. My hand reaches for it as though controlled by some being other than myself. I can't pull it back. I can't prevent my fingers from grasping the zipper tag attached to the front of the body bag. Why am I having such a hard time with my native language today? Damn. I unzip the bag. It's you! And there I am, a wretched corpse exposed to the day's first rays of sunlight. I stand here in the doorway as I lay there atop the trolley, simultaneously alive and dead, but more dead than alive in both bodies. The bruising on my face is horrific, and I reach a stiff finger to my own lips, my living lips tracing the outline of the bruise I see before me. 
There is no pain where the bruise should be, and I breathe a sigh of relief, for why would there be any pain if I'm already dead? To feel pain would be absurd, and then I would really have to start worrying. I wonder how I died. Did I fall from a great height? Did somebody hit me with a car? Or did I collapse from some eternal reason, perhaps from organ failure or some undiagnosed sickness? Maybe I didn't die, and the corpse in front of me is alive, living and breathing just as I do while standing in front of myself. This is getting confusing. Maybe this is all a prank I pulled on myself, dying just as a joke, but never really dying. Always living until the point I actually die and it's no longer a prank. Over here going in circles. You are standing there in front of your dead body in a body bag. Why don't you make sure that body is real? It couldn't it could not be real. It could just be a fake body. My head is splitting. I can't think straight. All the thoughts in my mind are jumbled. The meanings behind unspoken words disappearing behind foggy clouds inside my shattered skull. To clear my head, I step around my corpse and stand by the walkway's railing. I'm on the fourth floor of the apartment building. There are two floors above me, so I could go higher if I wish, but I'm pretty sure a leap from here will be enough to render my living body identical to that of the corpse on the trolley. So you're just gonna kill yourself. At this point in time, there exist two versions of Emi Katsuno. One is living and is me, and the other is dead but is also me. I can choose how to be alive and dead, or be dead and dead. But I cannot choose to be alive and alive. So even if I choose to be alive and dead, I'll still only be half alive. But choosing dead and dead is nice and clean, absolute, an indisputably solid state of existence. I grip the cold steel handrail and lean over the walkway, my hair whipping against my face thanks to the relentless wind. Four stories below me is a small courtyard paved with concrete and decorated with the occasional shrub or flower bed. Oh. I miss the concrete by about two feet. Dirt sprays up into the air as my nose is crushed under my own body weight. I think about that photo Kurosawa sent me, with her smug smile and her hands full of stolen money. My teeth grind into my tongue and sever it, but it doesn't manage to escape my closed mouth. My mind wanders and settles on Corpse Girl's website. What was that all about, anyway? As far as I know, nothing happened when I submitted Kurosawa's details. Haha, <laughs> maybe Kurosawa found the website as well and submitted my details first. I guess Corpse Girl got me. Well played, Kurosawa. I think I can taste blood in my mouth, but it might just be a memory from some other point in my lifetime. A blinking light from a nearby parked car kind of irritates me, but then my, version, my vision turns blue or black, and my only concern is now how I'll never truly know what. Well then. So it's like an existential, existential crisis? Like, you see your dead body and you're just like, okay, so this is actually my dead body. Do I die die? Thank you for playing this demo. Unravel the mystery of Corpse Girl when the full version of Corpse Factory is released in 2022. <gasps> That's like next year! I should be able to get it next year. I should be in a better place. But that was actually really good. It was text this is a text based game, but it was actually pretty good. I'm actually pretty surprised by it. Surprised by it. Ten ten, I would play the full game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um kind of wondering like is it like um you know, like a existential crisis cuz you like you see your dead body in front of you. Excuse me, sorry. You see your dead body in front of you, and you know you're alive right that second. So do you just, like... It, it seems like you can choose. Like, they don't just kill you. It's the fact that you seeing your dead body is what leads you to decide to go ahead and complete the dead body. You know? That was a pretty good game. I wouldn't, wouldn't mind getting the full full game whenever it's available next year. That was Corpse Factory, everybody. I hope you all enjoy. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end this uh, this video here for today. This is going to be it for this video, though. So thank you all for watching. 
Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. That'd be very helpful. So yeah, I hope y'all liked uh, the video. Um, hope y'all enjoyed yourselves, and I will see you next time.